quickest the last couple laps at better than 208 miles an hour. And the caution comes out once again. And, oh no, it's Anthony, A.J. Foyt the fourth. little um, skids now that the cards ride on which is why we're seeing all the sparks which we haven't seen them seen that kind of display of pyrotechnics before well what happens as well when you lose both front wheels you actually lose the brakes that's why he can't stop the rear wheels turning as well so at that moment you're just a passenger you got no brakes on the car you got no steering wheel and the car will go whatever it will go emergency medical position here it is through the turn three and four complex you'll see the uh, two Red Bull Cheever cars and then you see Scott Sharp up there on the outside now Anthony Foyt's coming along behind all of this and right now what's going to end up happening is Carpenter that we're going to circle right here has had to move up because he came across Baron too quickly and ends up taking the lane that Anthony Foyt wanted. He had nowhere to go. You can see his left front wheel is already off because of the contact with Carpenter's car. The right front wheel comes off from the impact on the wall. Unfortunately. Well, back at Texas, we went green for just two laps. And then this is live. This is Ed Carpenter. Paul, it makes you wonder if there is some damage done to his car upon that impact. You know, we talked about the compact contact on the right rear, and all of a sudden that came out of turn three and four. He was by himself and ended up the wall. That's an oil fire. They'll get it out right away. There's no danger of that spreading. All from the Red Bull number 52. Well, as we come into that shot there, he has already hit the wall on the right side, and he's actually missed what we call the safer barrier, which is actually only in the turns, the steel and foam energy reducing barrier that they've actually put up in both of these turns on both ends. Actually, he did impact it. He impacted it way back. And we talked about losing the brakes once you've actually lost some of the wheels off the car. So he did impact that safer barrier that's actually up in the wall and helps reduce the G's that the driver sees upon impact. He is sitting down in 17, and that's Scott Sharp. And that looks serious. Visor Kim. They have not gone yellow for this, Scott. Well, you know, he said shut the engine off, so it certainly makes certain makes me feel like oh, we're no. on the track. Mark Taylor. Anytime there's smoke coming out of the back, there is the opportunity for some type of a fluid. So we'll have to see if this had any effect on uh, anything to do with Scott Sharp. We're on the hook, and here's his onboard. Now watch, he just changed gears down here. Now watch his hands, how quickly they move once the car starts to go loose in the back end. And the impact is so fierce, it actually just knocks the camera off the car. You can see all the sparks increase there, and boy, that was close. Castro Nevis got out of it, and Manning almost chucked right into him. Yeah, I tell you, Robbie Gordon called this the death wiggle in Indianapolis. <laughs> you know, when you have, if, when you feel that wiggle, you know you're not coming back. But uh, I tell you, Mark did a good job to keep the car against the wall there because if had he turned in front of Elio, that could have been a much worse uh, situation for him. He gets in under Mira, so four we, laps to go now. Now what these guys got to do in the second group that we see right there, they got to get in single file line, start to catch up to both Kanan and Fran Keaty that are up ahead if they're going to have a shot at getting involved in the drafting battle for the win. They stretched out a lead right now, as you can see. Doesn't look like they did a very good job in staying single file. Kanan and Fran Keaty, teammates at the front. Three to go. Hornish gets it way down under the white line. Outside, 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 outside. Well, I think barring disaster, I mean, this race really looks like it's going to be decided between Frank Kitty and Tony, and then a third place uh, fight there between these four cars that you're seeing. Yeah, we may know the names. Elio Castro Nevis pulls off the chorus. He is out. He might be out of fuel. Absolutely. 69 laps since the last fuel stop. Long way. Even with yellows, that one doesn't work. It all comes down to this moment. The white flag comes out at the start-finish line. Just one to go. Teammates, Kanan, Frankiti. The move will have to come heading into three. About 40 feet separate those two cars. Frankiti decides to pull a little high. Is he trying to aggravate uh, any conditions on Kanan's car? He's setting himself for the finish now. Tony Kanan makes that final turn. 
heads for the finish line. Frankini doesn't have the power to get there. It's Kanan, then Frankini, then Alex Barron, Sam Hornis Jr., Adrian Fernandez. That's your top five, and Tony Kanan scores his third career win and second of the season. And with that, Tony Kanan will take the IRL IndyCar Series points lead.